trouble in paradise? Why is it that there is always so much drama in the Dance Moms community? Picture that started it all. I can't tell you the last time we've all been in the same room. Ten years. <laughs> I just got chills. Back together. Oh my goodness. Brooke is so small compared to the rest of them. I personally, it's like so weird to see some people missing though. Hi, I'm Chloe. I'm Brooke. Hi, I'm Kalani. I'm Jojo Seawood. I'm Kendall. I'm Paige. Picture that started it all. Dance Moms, it blows my mind because it is now bigger than it ever was. Okay, let's talk about that. So, Dance Moms. I feel like more people know about it now because the show has been around and been talked about for like 10 years, but when I found this video on YouTube of the Dance Moms reunion, this teaser had 62,000 views. Back when Dance Moms was actually airing, like let's say season four, if I were to go on YouTube the next day to look for like the full version of Chloe Solo, it would have like 3 million views already. So the hype around Dance Moms was definitely super duper intense while the show was airing. I don't know if a lot of people People even realize that this was like one of the biggest reality shows to ever come to television ever like we're talking like up there with like keeping up with the Kardashians Brooke, is your mother get your, your finger, finger you out of be? my face girls out the room that fight happened and then we never danced again I feel like I ruined your life and your dance career I can't believe I caused that <laughs> oh my god I can't I can't watch Brooke cry over this. I always wondered like how they felt about it, like whether they felt like they were giving up their entire dance careers because obviously they could have continued to, to dance. I don't know. It's not right at all for Kalani to take responsibility for that. She was a literal child and it was not her choice to be there or to dance. That was definitely up to her parents. And I would say, that fight between Kelly and Abby is definitely like the Roman Empire of everybody that's ever watched Dance Moms. It like is not going to leave your head. I don't think anybody can explain how complicated all of our relationships are with her. That would never come 10 feet near me if she did that to me. Have you learned nothing? We would not be here without Dance Moms. It was literally the stepping stone into who we are today. I think it's the same as with any relationship with a narcissist, especially if you're like the golden child is that they bring you so much and you're always going to feel this guilt like you owe them everything because they gave you everything that you have but at the same time they literally damaged you they brought you in they used you for all that you're worth and they threw you out like dirty water and so it's obviously going to create a very very much a difficult relationship because it's really hard to process emotions that are so polarizing on both sides. Hey, them not being here is kind of like, let me erase my past, pretend it never happened, shove it down the drain, when it's like, that's why you are who you are. She's gonna go. Okay, Jojo. Again, with Jojo opening her mouth when she really should not be. But watching Jojo, it's like, Jojo, just zip that mouth shut sometimes. You were not there like Maddie and Mackenzie. You were not the golden child for so many years like Maddie was. Nobody on this team, adult, child, nobody else can relate to how that experience would have been to be Maddie. Like, yes, Brooke was Abby's golden child before the show, but nobody's going to be able to relate to what it was like to be holding up Abby's career. Like, you, Maddie was, like, driving Abby's career. She put all of her eggs in Maddie's basket because she knew that putting her brand and putting all of this emphasis on, like, a nine-year-old that could actually perform the way that Maddie would helped Abby's brand, so Abby exploited the absolute crap out of that child for so many years. Is Jojo Siwa starting an OnlyFans? More on that later. He never danced again. I feel like I ruined your life and your dance career. <laughs> I thought it wasn't enough, like in every single way. You're not gonna sit in the studio, pout in the corner, be a bitch to my mom, and then expect me to like you. Oh, you want me so bad. Jojo Siwa is being accused of firing a young disabled teen from her girl group XOMG Pop. It's It's been so great. I'm biased because she's yeah. like my star of the dance. And I don't want to be the person who gets left behind. Trouble in paradise. Why is it that there is always so much drama in the Dance Moms community? We have Jojo Siwa and honestly people think that she is using these tattoos to deflect from the whole Leah Sanderson and the XOMG Pop Rolling Stones article situation. I actually have two tattoos dedicated to him. 
Um, this one's dedicated to my baby girl one day. Her name is uh, Freddie. Then this is dedicated to twin boys, Eddie and Teddy. Um, <laughs> Freddie, Eddie, and Teddie. Freddie, Eddie, and Teddie. I got, I want awesome. three babies. I have my sperm donor lined up. JoJo has been open about her dream of starting a family and revealed on the best podcast ever with Raven Simone and Miranda that she wants to have kids pretty early in life. Like, since I was literally 12, I can't wait to be a mom. I cannot wait to have babies. Also, if you haven't heard yet, JoJo is going to be judging on the panel of this season for So You Think You Can Dance. She's the newest judge on So You Think You Can Dance, telling Access Hollywood that this season will be a completely different competition show. Oh my gosh, it is incredible. It is a whole new version of So You Think You Can Dance. The, the talent this season is unlike ever before. We're, we're currently still filming and we every day are having the hardest time because it is Difficult, just yeah. so good. It's, it's been so great. I mean, it's, it's so fun growing up. It's so fun changing. It's so fun deep diving into massive projects. I mean, deep diving into So You Think has been, I feel like honestly, just in the, this last few weeks that we've been filming, five weeks, it's, it's been so great to just like evolve, change, follow what's going on. It's, it's insane. It's I was personally questioning whether they were going to go ahead and fire Jojo Siwa because there has been so much negative press about her lately regarding the Rolling Stones article, but seeing that it seems that this entire season is going to be pre-filmed, I don't think that they're going to fire her. That being said, on the Rolling Stones article, this is about Leah Sanderson and Angie Sanderson and the XOMG Pop Girls. If you're not familiar with XOMG Pop, it was a girl group that was created on a TV. And while we are on that note, because we do have a little bit more to cover about Jojo Siwa, while we're talking about the Rolling Stones, I have a little bit of an update on that as well. So this was posted over on Angie's page. Angie is Leah's mom. The post reads, the Siwas gave me the choice of an Airbnb or a hefty relocation package. I chose the relocation package since I wanted to pick my own area a little further out. Honestly, wasn't even expecting that, and it was beyond kind of them. To which somebody replied, Well, maybe they learned from their mistakes because the three original girls from out of state were definitely not given this. Glad you are sleeping on an air mattress. Glad you aren't sleeping on an air mattress for a year or actually longer. You are benefiting from how the OGs struggled. If you are unfamiliar with who Penelope is, she is the most recent new member of XOMG Pop, to which Angie Sanderson replied, I hope P is getting paid and all of this is true, but what about the other four girls who laid the foundation of this group for years? Do they not deserve to be compensated first before anyone else? It's time for the Siwas to make this right. And apparently Jojo posted this TikTok and people think that Jojo posted this TikTok to shade Leah and Angie because she quickly deleted it. She deserves nothing. Don't have an attitude that you are entitled in this world. You are not. You deserve nothing else. You earn it. You can't stand here and cry. I love no, 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 no crying children. None. Well, if you yell at me, I'm gonna cry. Get out. Going home right now. Next, we have a little update from Miss Maddie Ziegler. Maddie was on her way to the premiere for her own film. If you weren't familiar, Maddie is starring in a brand new film called Fitting In. So she was heading to the Toronto premiere for that. And I can't wait to see this film and wishing Maddie the best of luck with the release of her new film. And hopefully this launches her film career to a new level. We also have an update from Kenzie Ziegler and unfortunately the comment section here saying, are you going to be at the reunion? And unfortunately, a lot of us already know the answer to that, which is no, Mackenzie will not be at the reunion and neither will Maddie Ziegler, unfortunately. And I don't know if you guys saw, but Nia was actually in a music video and not only was she featured in the music video, she's singing in the music video as well. So she's kind of featured on a song, I guess, with Jake Clark. Let's take a look at that. Baby, you should take notes. I've been working on my fitness and I'm looking delicious. 
And then we have an update from our beloved Brooke Highland. I wonder if she has any more juicy information or sneak peeks about the Dance Moms reunion. Let's take a listen. I can't believe you went to see Paris Hilton. Didn't get the chance to talk to her. Boy, is she stunning. We had a long night. We up and at him till like 2 a.m. Learned if I have a long night and I'm drinking, I'm up so early. So I've been up since five. I have my lightning strips in, that's I a lisp right now. Went to the Pacific Palisades this morning. Me, Kalina, and Kathleen went on a little walk, got some coffees from Alfred. I just showered. We're going to a gifting suite in a little. Just Tila's plus one, I have no idea where it's at or what it's for. And then we're meeting up with my friends in Santa Monica and Venice and like bar hopping. So I'll get to see all my friends from when I used to live here. So I'm excited to see where the night takes us. Go grab a water. I should probably drink one. The one thing I hate about traveling is that I never bring my comfort cup and don't drink any water when I don't have it. I'm wondering if I should wake up Tila. I feel like she might want to start getting ready. I also don't want to wake her up if she's like, dude, I could still have another hour. These are cutting off because I need to call my dad. He's like, why did I hear from someone else that you're in California? I have a bad habit of like forgetting to say that I'm leaving. <laughs> I'm gonna wait on my lipstick and just do this. So my lips are really dry. That's what the makeup looks like. Now we're gonna go wake up Tila. Bye. Now, is JoJo Siwa planning to start an OnlyFans? Fans are definitely concerned after this most recent TikTok that she posted today because she's no longer a child star, according to her, and fans are speculating that she's trying to become an adult film star. Oh, boy. So with Jojo Siwa claiming the end of her child stardom and people questioning whether she's going to be going to become an adult star, or whether she's starting an OnlyFans, this is what my opinion is. Warning, the following content is not made for children and may be disturbing or offensive to some viewers. May contain sexual themes, violence, strong language, dramatic scenarios, and flashing lights. Viewer discretion is advised. I think because Jojo posted this TikTok the other day where she was saying it was like the biggest meeting of her life and then we see her showcasing like this entirely different style. She's now wearing all of these expensive chains and she got a full sleeve of tattoos that I'm still questioning like is that even real or is it nylons? Like it's Jojo Siwa. You never know when she's faking because she's not the most honest person when it comes to how she portrays things online and we all saw her like fake those pregnancies and stuff like that so I'm like is it even a real tattoo sleeve? I don't know. I don't care personally but what I do think is happening is I do think that she signed with a record label and that's what my hunch is because she has her own little record label going basically i guess you could call it that with her and her mom and the xomg pop girls because they're funding them they have their own contract so you could say that they're a record label and then i would say that jojo is trying to pursue a more adult stream with her entertainment we can see that with how she's been trying to distance herself from the little kid kind of branding and how she's entirely changed up her image she talks completely differently now and just the way that she fronts herself her persona has changed entirely which makes you question like how much of this was authentic and real in the first place like people are allowed to grow and change but when you change entirely overnight but you claim that all of the years previous were super authentic, that you dressing like a seven-year-old with a bow in your hair and a long ponytail and wearing the clothes that you did up until you could pawn off that brand onto a new group of kids. It's just very questionable to me. Again, I really don't care either way whether that was her authentic self or not, but it does make you question how honest somebody is when they've swore up and down that that was their authentic self and this is her. And then when I was 18, on the day after my 18th birthday, I decided to take the bow out and become an entirely different person. No, that sounds like a brand, not a person. That's not how people work. That's not how identities flow and change gradually as a human being. That's how a brand rebrands so that's how why i'm like mm, was that any of this ever authentic i don't know i can see the authentic jojo i don't need to see her brand through 
any specific way to see who the authentic person is. But anyways, I do think that she has probably been signed with a record label. I think that she's going to be coming out with a lot more mature music. And people have been saying in her comment section, like, you're really about to hate this girl. And I really think that for a lot of people, you are. If you're expecting JoJo to stay in that brand, that box that she created with the sparkly, glittery bows and the anti-bullying and this and that, we're about to say goodbye to that. I think that JoJo is going to start a record deal. She's going to be producing an album. That's what I think. I think she's going to be working on new music. JoJo, in my opinion, is not a good singer. She is a... Like, she doesn't have the talent, and she clearly hasn't worked on the skill set over the years. So I think that she can be a musician, and I think that she definitely has a place in the music industry, but it's going to be maybe rapping or maybe some kind of speak-singing style, because she is not a vocalist, let's just say that, and she hasn't worked on it um, to any, like, notable improvement over the years. So... Um, I guess we'll see what happens, but I'm expecting Jojo to try and be, like, fitting in with the rap scene. I'm literally expecting her, just like everything else she's done in her career, to try and copy the Miley Cyrus blueprint to a T. I just feel like with Miley Cyrus, it was so authentic and real to who she was. Maybe going out on stage and, like, playing with the foam finger and doing all of these attention scandalous things weren't exactly who Miley was, but she knew that she needed to do that in order to get her music talked about. And in the words of Miley Cyrus, if you could have people talking about your performance um, a month later, you would. Um, so <laughs> I think that Miley knew what she had to do for a brand campaign. That being said, I just don't think that... JoJo's fan base is the same as Miley Cyrus. Miley Cyrus was on a TV show. Her fan base loved her for her. They loved her entertainment. They loved everything about it. And JoJo's fan base, I don't think does love the real authentic JoJo. Some people might. I think that JoJo's fan base loves the brand that created, that she created, that she passed down to the XOMG pop girls with like the anti-bullying and the everything is positive and enthusiastic and everybody is bright and glittery and wearing bows and it was just a very visual brand and I don't think that Jojo carried much of who she was in that brand and I don't think that she carries much of that brand into her new personal persona and that's why she's getting so much hate on the internet as well as like the Rolling Stones article and everything that's come out about her um through the Sandersons, Leah Sanderson and um the XOMG pop debacle because although they have all of the other members from the group that have previously left under an NDA so that they can't speak, we kind of have all gathered what has happened and how that has progressed. And so it's kind of tainted JoJo's image as this anti-bullying, super pure, super girl's girl kind of person when it just doesn't stand, like reality doesn't stand with the brand, you know? I hope that makes sense and I'm not just blabbing, but I do think that going forward that we're going to see a Jojo Siwa that continues to not care about how she comes across and not care, just like um, how Angie said when she was talking, Angie is Leah's mom, how she was talking about how Jojo sees the media. She thinks that everything will just be a headline for one day and then it'll blow over the next. I think that that is how Jojo is going to continue taking her career because if, if you look at her TikTok with all of this hate, with all of these people that have stopped supporting her, she's still getting millions and millions and millions and millions of views. Like she's getting just last week, like 25 million, 30 million views on a TikTok. She posted last night, it already has like five or six million views. So everything that she does is getting viewed, it's getting talked about, just like Miley Cyrus. And I feel like Jojo feels like, she believes everything Abby said on Dance Moms about like all press is good press, but we've seen with Abby that all press is not good press and going to prison really derailed her career. She had a television show afterwards, but she doesn't have any kind of engagement or any kind of support like she did before. She's shopping around other television shows. She already created another television show that she launched on Brandon TV and we're just not seeing any kind of hype around Abby Lee Miller the same way that we were before because she honestly believed that all 
media attention is good media attention. All publicity is great when in reality it's not. And I think that we're seeing that with Jojo Siwa as well, that she's able to get the attention. She's able to get people to continue to watch her. But I don't think that her original people that were supporting her are supporting her anymore. Men just like have the audacity. More drama in the dance moms community? Never. So I'm getting my breast reduction and I like to talk about it because I know that a lot of the girlies want to hear about it and I want to share my experience. Q&A time. I was trying to and it gets worse. No. Unless, I'm kidding. Unless you're my like, okay, no, 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 no. 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 As always, there is so much going on in the Dance Moms community. <laughs> and so much attention-seeking behavior from Jojo Siwa, so we have a lot to cover in today's video. So, strap your seat. Strap your seatbelt. It's gonna be a bumpy ride. We gotta find it. I should call my mom. I don't want her to see me cry. This is so embarrassing. <laughs> Jojo, you coming out with some new music. What? I kind of predicted and figured that Jojo of Siwa had new music coming out, so this isn't a huge shocker to me, but... Yes! What? Girl, tell us about it! I can say, look, I got this really cool tattoo on my hand, and uh, actually, yesterday, I gave the heads up, like, hey, it's not for kids anymore. Oh. You let them know. I think there's a reason why people who have come before me have had this moment. Mm -hmm. Take with that what you will, what you'll assume. And I'm really excited to have this moment. It's something I've been looking forward to for three years, four years now, really like heavily. And uh, you got us excited and we're excited for you. A new era of life, we're becoming an adult. <laughs> Kids are gonna pop out today. Oh, I'm definitely working on two. Also, if you didn't hear, Kalani Hilliker is getting a breast reduction, so we have a little update from her about that. Let's get ready and talk about my upcoming surgery. So the time has finally come and I have secured a surgery date. I am so excited to be going to Dr. Shapiro to get my breast reduction. I ultimately chose him just because he made me feel so safe. On my first appointment, I just really felt like I was in good hands. He just kind of read my mind on exactly what I wanted and really was just helping me understand my vision coming to life. This is something that I have struggled with since I was a dancer growing up as a teenager and still now in my adulthood. And this decision was made just because I want to feel better in my body. I know a ton of people have gone to Dr. Shapiro and have only had the most amazing things to say. It's crazy to think that it's only two weeks away. And I know that a lot of people don't like to talk about this stuff in real life or online, but I love to be honest with you guys. So I'm definitely gonna take you along on the journey. I also know a lot of you have been super interested as in maybe this is something that you guys have wanted to do or are thinking about, so I wanna keep you involved in how this goes for me. After reading a lot of your comments, everybody has just said so many positive things about how this has just made them feel so much better and I'm just so excited for that to happen for me. I think part of the journey is definitely choosing a surgeon that has the same vision as you and is gonna give you exactly what you want. And that's why I trusted Shapiro to do it. In the past couple years, I definitely have just felt really insecure about how I look in different tops and if they're too much on me. To be able to get them to be the size and shape that I want them to be is just such a blessing. Next appointment is my the last appointment before surgery. It is my pre-op appointment and I will take you guys along with me. I don't really know what happens, so I can't even prepare for what it is, but I think it's just kind of like photos and just kind of like going over exactly what I want. My first appointment I was kind of like not knowing what I was supposed to say but after that I know exactly what I want now I have some photo inspo that I'm gonna show him then it'll be surgery time before I even know it if you've ever had a breast reduction please comment down below and give me some tips on recovery and everything guys 
I am so ready for this. Alrighty, this is the final look and please stay tuned and follow along on this journey. Let's get ready and talk about why I am getting a breast reduction. First, I want to start off by saying that growing up on a public platform and being on a reality TV show, I have been used to people commenting about my body all the time and as in times, trust me, it has been incredibly difficult. I do think that for the most part, I am pretty confident in my body. Somebody in my comments, again, was being incredibly rude and calling her huge. And I just don't understand why I get so many comments on all of my social media insulting Kalani and her weight when she literally is built like a goddess. And I swear any grown woman would love to look how she looks. Like, what? It doesn't make any sense to me. Like, honey, you wish. With being confident in my body, this is still something that I've always wanted to do. And I've seen a lot of negative comments, mostly positive. I would say 20 ne 20 percent negative, mostly positive comments. You guys are making me feel so much better about getting the surgery. A lot of you guys have had it before thinking about it. So that's why I'm being super honest about it. The first thing a lot of people say is like, why don't you lose weight? Like if you lost weight, your boobs would go down. And as that is a true statement, even when I lose weight, I still have very big, uncomfortable boobs. And personally, I just don't love the shape of them. And I just want to feel more comfortable in my body when I'm dancing. I'm a very active person. And every time I do anything, my boobs are constantly flying out of my sports bras. For instance, today I wore the sweatshirt the entire time I was in Pilates because my boobs are falling out of my top. And yes, I do get a size that fits me. It just becomes very uncomfortable sometimes. And then to all the scary men saying, well, you were blessed with these beautiful boobs. Why would you get rid of them? Because just because I have big boobs doesn't mean that I feel that blessed to have them. It is very uncomfortable to live like this. I constantly have back problems, including from dance, but also just from having big boobs that I would love to get rid of. And then also people are, people always say, you look like a whore, you look like a slut, because I constantly have my boobs out. And honestly, I don't try to have my boobs out. I am wearing an outfit that somebody with smaller boobs, you know, might not look as sexy on, but on me, it looks super sexy. Don't get me wrong, I like to be sexy sometimes, and I like to, you know, have a little bit of cleavage and look hot and feel good about myself. But sometimes I just can't even wear a shirt and it look normal at all on me. Most importantly, I am doing this for myself. I'm not doing it for anybody else. So any haters in my comments, uh, it doesn't really affect me because this is something I've wanted to do for so long and I'm so excited about. There has been so many of you guys really reassuring me on my decision. I've gotten so many DMs and comments with just help with like post care, how you guys felt and how I've literally seen every person that's gotten it has not regretted it and it's the best decision ever. So I'm just so excited to feel even more confident in my skin. These past couple days have been kind of rough just because I'm really anxious, you know, for surgery and I just kind of want the day to be here. And yes, I am making my boob reduction my personality trait up until it is finished. I am going to try my best after surgery and stuff to keep you guys updated on how I'm feeling day of. No promises because I do need to just also focus on myself and, you know, feel good. <laughs> to be honest with you, and I could be wrong, I think that I have a pretty high pain tolerance. So I'm hoping that... I'm not feeling too horrible recovering. Some of my dancer friends that have got it have said that it just feels like you kind of did a really hard, hard um, bar day. So we'll see. Cannot wait to put my new boobies in a swimsuit this summer and just like feel so hot. But that is all I got to say today. So make sure to keep up with me and I'll try and keep you updated as much as I can on this boob reduction journey. Bye guys. Okay guys, let's go over some things that I got for my recovery from my breast reduction and the lipo that I'm doing on my sides. Um, and let me know if I'm missing anything or I need to add anything because I'm just like going on an Amazon spree. I don't care how much money I spend right now because I wanna be feeling good when I'm recovering. Okay, I feel like this one is random, but I'm getting this antibacterial body wash because they told me that like before I go into surgery, I need to have this bot, like I need to have antibacterial body wash. And I don't know what other body washes are like antibacterial. So I just assumed that one was good. Um, and also for showering, like after my surgery. So any, uh, any, let me know how I feel about that. Okay, just gauze pads and like cushion care. Okay, I found this medical bra. Thoughts, comments, concerns on that one. And then I saw this like zipper sports bra one. 
So we'll see how that one is too. Now that I'm looking at it, the reviews aren't that great. So that kind of scares me. And then just the basic fruit of the loom. Um, maybe let me know what some of your favorite like post bras are for this surgery, um, for rest breast reduction surgery. And also too, if you sized like down a lot, I usually get a medium, but honestly, like I kind of fall out of a medium. So I was thinking that maybe I'd still be fine in a medium, but I want to like be se secure. So I don't know if I should get like a small, let me know what you did. Okay. I was also told I need to get compression socks for the surgery. They say men's, but there's women's ones for this one too. Are these like the right compression socks? Like, I don't know what I'm supposed to get. So let me know. Okay. Then my really good friend just got a breast um, augmentation, but she said that this is like something like this is the best to sleep with like a wedge. So let me know if you guys have a specific kind. I just found this one and thought that it would be good, but I'm not obviously like too sure. So let me know. I keep saying, let me know, but seriously guys, like, let me know. I don't know what to do. Oh, someone said I had a pregnancy pillow and low key. I've been wanting one anyways to sleep with. So I'm kind of into it, but I don't even know if I'm gonna be able to like lay like that. So let me know if you used a pregnancy pillow. Okay. And that's all I've really thought about. I know I should get some sort of like scar cream um i don't know if there's any certain ice packs i should be using somebody told me like use like peas or strawberries um should i get ice packs like special ice packs do i need heating packs like is that gonna feel good um it's ibuprofen right you can't take advil or anything like that i'm pretty sure it's ibuprofen is there just like any other things i'm missing please let me know because i want to get it ordered by like tomorrow so that it gets here before my surgery on friday guys the day is here all right i'm wearing my skim soft lounge outfit and i felt that it was the most comfiest to go into my surgery i am headed to my mom's house right now to drop off all my stuff in my car and then from there she will take me to my breast surgery bye bye big boobies we shall see you hopefully never Ooh, i got my bag i have everything in it oh my gosh it's so heavy i'm going to wear these little uggs into surgery and in a mental health check, I'm actually feeling really good. I'm more excited. I feel like the excitement versus the nerves and it's making me really happy. Although I'm sure once it gets there, I'm gonna be like, <gasps> but let's grab our stuff and head to my mother's house. Dance mom, Kira. Here is this wedge pillow everybody told me to get. I can open it. Hi. To end up my sissy. <laughs> Give me kisses. I love you. Okay. Here is my wedge pillow to sleep on. I feel like this is definitely going to help. We have a recliner chair, but I just don't know how comfy I would be in a recliner chair. So I think that this wedge is going to be my lifesaver. Then these are my sports bras. I only got three just because I don't know how I'm going to be. I'll order more if... I'll order more if these don't fit or whatever, but I just got a black, a white, and a gray. I'm gonna bring the black one today. And then a pregnancy pillow. A lot of people said that they liked this too. So we'll see which other one I end up liking better. Not my pregnancy pillow. So I will be taking over my old room, which is my brother's room. So I'm just getting my stuff set up in here. Sorry, Jax, it's my room again for the weekend my room all set up all my medicine is over here yeah. and just the things i'm gonna need go say hi to your friend go say hi to your friend say hi bella hi. i just took my antibacterial shower now i'm just seeing what it's gonna be like to lay here and let me tell you i don't lay on my back so i'm really nervous for this maybe this pillow will help me i don't know but but guys it is time to leave my friend bella just got here to pick me up so Let's head to the surgery center. I always start talking like that when I'm getting nervous. <laughs> we are here! <laughs> so I just got over my fear of a red blood pressure cuff and it's almost surgery time. See you on the flip side. Okay, I'm going through day two of recovery. My surgery is on Friday, today's Sunday. And I was just gonna give you a couple updates of what I'm feeling and kind of what's going on. I'm not gonna lie, I'm way more sore than I expected. I have a really high pain tolerance, but I'm in pain. The pain meds aren't working as good as the muscle relaxers for me. I am 100% super 
constipated. So I've been taking laxatives. Every couple hours I do try and get up just to walk outside, get some fresh air and just get some like circ blood circulation going. I did eat in an out burger last night, which was really good. But other than that, I've been doing soft foods. I have been so thirsty. I've drank so much water. I do have a lot of bruising and tomorrow's my appointment so they can take off my wraps and I can see my boobs. So I'm really excited and even though it's painful, I'm really happy I did it. Your sister's going to jail. Have a little compassion. Kim, would you stop taking pictures of yourself? Your sister's going to jail. All right, so just a quick little update from Kendall Vertes. This is what she's been up to lately. We are back at Clemson, thank God. This is my first time watching Andrew play on his new school. He's a grad student here at Clemson. So my parents drove down last night, like 12 and a half hours. His parents drove from New York 14 hours and I drove from Jamie, which is like seven hours. So we are all very excited to watch some baseball today, but it is so gloomy outside. It's supposed to rain. They already pushed the game back. I think that just calls for some tequila drinks and maybe a baseball cap. I just bought this Estee Lauder Double Wear Stay In Place Makeup Foundation. The best purchase. I am very weird about foundations. I am so easily influenced on TikTok. Someone wears the Armani, I'm like, okay, I'm gonna go get it. This foundation, the best coverage yet not cakey and it's so light and fluffy on my skin. It literally just went on like butter. A year ago today, we were driving Andrew to the hospital. He tore his labrum, so he had surgery on his entire labrum. It was like a 360 tear. He could not play baseball. And now we're watching him play at his dream school and he just hit a walk-off home run to win the game against South Carolina. It is so crazy how life works. Something about getting ready at your boyfriend's place, it just hits different. I got out of the shower and I put on his sweatshirt and I have taco pants on right now. And I'm just, I'm enjoying every second of this. I'm on spring break. I have no schoolwork to worry about. I get to go watch my man play baseball and then come home and just like chill on the couch and play cards. All right, I'm holding myself accountable. I'm going easy on the eyeshadow. I'm not doing brown today. We're just gonna do one color and that's it. This is an awesome makeup palette. It's super small, easy to pack. And the colors are just, they're so basic, but it's like, it's all I need. Okay, since we did simple eyeshadow, I had to do the eyeliner. I love doing a black waterline, but it always seeps into my teardrops and then it, I have like black coming down here. I don't know what to do. I'm I did a little bit on my upper waterline. I'm gonna keep it for now, put my mascara on and then see, cause we can always add it. Obviously we are going in with the Maybelline Sky High. This is the only mascara I will ever be using. I think I'm gonna stick with the no eyeliner on the bottom because my eyes are looking very, very blue today. I just went in with my Chanel bronzer in the pot. I really hope they never discontinue it because it is such a great creamy formula. This is dangerous because I went way too crazy with it at the Super Bowl. So let's learn from our past mistakes and take it easy again, okay? There we go. I thought that I was a more like dark pinky girl. I am obsessed with how like Barbie bubblegum pink this blush is. It, like I think that's the perfect amount and then it also comes with the powder and then a highlighter. So I literally just swipe it with the powder and then I'll also whoa, swipe it with the highlighter. Oh yes. And that is the final look. I'm gonna go do my hair, come back for the final fit. Love you guys. All right, now it's time for a little update from Brooke and Paige Highland. Shy. Sweet. <laughs> look at the swimsuit. Me and Paige are currently at the spa. I came here early for like hydrotherapy and completely forgot you need a swimsuit. So they gave us this one. Paper vibes. So it looks like I have like a shower cap down there. Winning too. We just wrapped the sauna. 
the cucumbers were very cooling honestly i don't even feel that that hot usually i look dying okay guys it smells like like mix in the steam room clearing out the the airways got a beverage and some little nuts they made us get in a cold shower to take off our masks and we screamed so loud like it was very dramatic okay. now we're enjoying the pool the little hot tub i think the next step is cold plunge a little bit like a raccoon <laughs> oh my gosh <laughs> <laughs> try and go under no i didn't <laughs> That was probably the best massage I've ever gotten. She literally told me I was strong because that's how much pressure she was using. But she was really getting in there, getting the knots. Oh, wish I could just be there forever. All right, you guys. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's video. Another Dance Moms update. If you did, make sure to subscribe to my channel. If you're brand new here, hit that bell notification so that you might get a notification when I upload a new video. You can give this video a thumbs up and leave a comment down below. That really helps the video's engagement. And check out my last video about the Dance Moms community over here. I will make sure to catch you guys in the next one. And as always, make sure to be weird, be wild, and stay sparkly. Thanks for tuning in, you guys. Bye.